Hello and welcome to video lecture series in sociology. Today we are going to discuss chapter 5 doing sociology research methods from your textbook introducing sociology. Now for understanding as you know that we have divided this chapter into 8 parts. So far in this chapter we have discussed what is research, how do we choose a topic for research, what are the various considerations in the process of research, what is the subjectivity and objectivity. We have discussed about various types of research designs, quantitative and qualitative, primary and secondary data and about mixed methods. In this lecture today, we will discuss about advantages and disadvantages of various types of research methods. Now research methods as you know are techniques used by the sociologist for collection of data. There are different types of data in sociological research such as primary, secondary, qualitative and quantitative data. We have already listed various types of methods that help us to collect these types of data. Let us discuss these methods in detail and learn about their advantages and disadvantages or merits or demerits. Before we start that discussion, you can recall this diagram where we have classified various methods as primary quantitative, primary qualitative, secondary quantitative and secondary qualitative. Now if you look at this diagram, we had placed different types of research method within these quadrants, plotting them on primary and secondary quantitative and qualitative. Now let us look at the advantages and disadvantages of various types of methods. Let us begin with official statistics. Official statistics is a secondary quantitative type of data or research method. The term official statistics refers to the mass of data collected by various governmental agencies. Like census is held at national level every 10 years. Census provides information regarding the composition of population in terms of number of births, deaths, economic statistics on the patterns of employment, income, unemployment, expenditure, on marriages, divorce, ethnicity, types of families within a society. Government also regularly produces data about rates of crime, illness, suicide, etc. In addition to government generated data, other institutions and organizations such as hospitals, economic organization and voluntary agencies provide important statistical information. Let us look at the advantages and disadvantages of using official stats as a method of data collection. Let us begin with advantages. Now one of the greatest advantage of official statistics is that it is readily available and at times official statistics can be the only source that provides you information regarding something. Say for example, if you want to know about the income level of people during 1950s, how would you come to know about that? You will try to find information about this only through official statistics which are available with different governmental agencies. The second important advantage of official statistics is it includes a large population and it is generally considered to be representative of the whole population. Another advantage is that it is well planned and conducted regularly. And because it is well planned and conducted regularly, official statistics allow comparison and they can help us to notice trend. Say notice trend in the sense that how much or what has changed over a period of time, say income level, education level, literacy rate and all these things. Finally, official statistics provides you aggregate about any phenomena and they are generally considered to be reliable because they are conducted regularly and they are collected by governmental agencies. Now let us look at some of the disadvantages of official statistics. One of the biggest problem with that, there is a problem of definition. That is how do you define a concept? Say if you have to talk about level of satisfaction, how do you measure satisfaction? In sociology or social sciences, there are some contested concepts and it is very difficult for a researcher to come up with a good measurable scale for such kind of contested concepts. Second disadvantage can be that they lack conceptual clarity. For example, what do we mean by poverty? say over the past 50, 60 years, the definition of poverty has changed. So how do you go back and understand what was meant by poverty at that point of time? Another important disadvantage could be that at times because government generates it, they could be biased. 
because the agencies might try to present a particular kind of image and in that case there can be an over reporting or under reporting of some phenomena. So, you can question the validity of the official statistics. Because they are usually collected at large scale, they can lack quality and in depth analysis and that is why again they cannot be valid. And another important disadvantage can be the skill of the researcher in the process of collection of data can also influence the collection of data. For example, some researchers can take their task very seriously and explore in greater depth while the others can take it lightly and they just fill up the questionnaires. The second method which is primary and quantitative in nature is the questionnaire method. Now, the questionnaire method is the most popular method of data collection in sociological research being conducted at large scale. It is mostly used method in survey research. Survey research uses structured interviews or questionnaires. Here the respondents are asked the same set of questions in exactly the same manner. They are asked to select their responses from a limited range of options already decided by the researcher. Such questions are called as closed ended questions. Let us discuss the advantages of questionnaire as a method of data collection. Now, the first advantage is that in questionnaire method response rate is generally very high because the researcher contacts the respondents directly. In questionnaires large sample can be questioned quickly because the researcher is filling up the schedules or the questionnaires directly and he can question and fill up the responses. It is cost effective method. Here the researcher can conduct large sample size surveys in a short span of time. Researchers can clarify question. Suppose if you do not understand a particular question that is, that is to be answered in a particular way, the researcher is present to help you to understand the question. The data collected through questionnaire is easy to compare because it is easy, easy to quantify and with easy comparison and easy, easy quantification of data, there is fast and efficient analysis of the data. And the data generated by questionnaires is generally considered to be reliable. That is, you can see that this data happens to be replicable. Now, if we talk about the disadvantages of questionnaire as a method, it has limited application. Once again, because it lacks in-depth exploration and meaning. While conducting interviews or filling questionnaires or schedules, there is a possibility of interviewer bias coming up. What do we mean by that? Interviewer bias is when occurs when the respondents give socially desirable responses to the researcher. So, if in case you want to present a particular kind of image of yours, you will give untrue answers. Now, as the sample size increases, the cost increases and again the questionnaires are filled in artificial situations and again their validity can be questioned. Questionnaires are not relevant for illiterate population that is those who cannot read or write cannot fill up questionnaires and there the researcher has to be present himself and fill the schedule. And questionnaires can be generally considered to be reliable. But because of the limited applicability and lacking in depth exploration, their validity can be questioned. So, these advantages and disadvantages can be considered as merits or demerits for both questionnaires and structured interviews because they are somewhat the same thing. Now, one of the ways to overcome the disadvantages or limitations of structured interviews and questionnaires which we just discussed is to use unstructured interviews. Unstructured interviews are like ordinary conversations between individuals. An unstructured interview is an interview where questions are not pre-arranged. The questions are spontaneously developed during the course of the interview. Here questions are based on the respondent's response and the interview proceeds like a normal friendly conversation between two people. Now, what are the advantages of unstructured interviews? One of the greatest advantages is that it helps you to conduct research on sensitive groups and topics which may not be easily discussed or openly discussed among people. It includes respondents viewpoint and give respondents freedom of expression of opinion. It does not restrict or impose researchers choice on the respondents in the form of pre given categories. Say for example, if in questionnaire structured interviews you ask somebody's opinion on do you like, dislike, agree or disagree, here you do not give these kind of categories or codes to choose from. 
Hence, you give freedom of expression and choice to the individual to respond in the manner he or she likes. And because you give this freedom, unstructured interviews help you to explore meaning and attitudes of people and understand the phenomena as it is. And because you are giving meaning and attitudes, you are trying to explore, understand meanings and attitudes, these are considered to be valid and in-depth analysis. And the data that you generate is considered to be very rich. As against these advantages, there are some disadvantages also of using unstructured interviews. One of the obvious disadvantages is that it needs more time and resources because in order to carry out a conversation, you need some time to spend with individual. There is a difficulty to quantify the responses and there is a problem of comparability. Because this is a conversation which flows freely, it is not pre-arranged like stru uh, structured interviews or questionnaires. Here, interview or the conversation can take any direction. And what can happen is that you cannot compare two interviews with two different respondents. Uh, once again, in structured interviews, in unstructured interviews, interview bias can occur because once again, these are conducted in artificial situations. Because again, respondents may try to give a socially desirable response. So, their responses may not be true. And the final disadvantage is that here in this, the memory of the researcher and the respondent can be questioned. Now, how this is a disadvantage? Because if in case you are talking to somebody, if you take down the notes at that point of time only, you are disturbing the flow of conversation. But if you come back and note down the interview later on, you may forget some of the important things. At the same time, if a respondent is explaining something about a piece of reality, he may not remember all the sequence of events in the greatest detail. So, here both the memory of the researcher and respondent can be questioned. Now, observation is yet another important method used in sociological research. Through observational methods, researchers do not have to completely rely on what people say they do. And thus, they can observe the difference between the actions and words of the people. Observation method is a technique in which the behavior of the researcher subject is watched and recorded without any formal questions like interviews. Observation can also be structured or unstructured or semi-structured. Observation can be further classified into non-participant observation and participant observation. We will see the difference occurs when we divide participant observation into two different techniques, overt and covert participation. In overt participation, the respondents or the group that is being studied knows about the presence of the observer among them. Whereas in covert participation, the group being studied is not aware of the presence of the researcher among them. The researcher is hidden. He disguises himself or herself as one of the members of the groups. Let us discuss its advantages and disadvantages. To begin with, let us discuss about the advantages of the participant observation. Participant observation produces rich data as compared to any other method of data collection. This is a quality work and offers in-depth analysis. At times, participation or participant method is the only practical method to gain entry into groups which are close to the outsiders. Such groups can be some gangs or some terrorist outfits or these groups which follow a particular way of life or a members of a cult which are not open to others. So, you become a participant observer either overt or covert and gain entry into these groups. The data collected through participant observation is high on validity because it offers you an insider's view and insight into the functioning of the group. Now, there is a scope for further research because when you enter the group, you might go with certain mindset. However, when you get to know these people, you might come up with more questions, the questions that need to be explored in future research. Now, in this particular method, you also try to analyze the process of becoming something. That is, how things get defined as by the members of the group, say a particular cult or religion. What do people mean by that particular practice? Now, this method is reliable as it generates data on perceptions, opinion and attitudes of people and it helps to understand people's perception of reality 
as it is, that is how they define reality themselves. But there are disadvantages of this method also. This is long and time consuming method. It involves a lot of money and resources and at times in covert participation where you are hidden, there is a personal cost or risk of life attached. Because if the group which is close to outsider comes to know that you are an outsider, you may risk your personal safety. At times, this method lacks objectivity because what happens that when you are participating in somebody's activities or in everyday life, there can be a subjective bias that can come up in the process of data collection. That is, people might start associating themselves with the activities of group and hence can lose objectivity and subjectivity may can come in. It is non-verbal, non-reliable and cannot be replicated and it becomes too specific or too context specific at points of time. And because of too, being too context specific, there are problems of generalization. The problem of generalization in the sense that you cannot come up with a theory that is applicable to other people. Again, because of being used for studying limited groups, there is a difficulty in gaining access to such groups and winning confidence of people. And once again, you can say that because you are within the group, you are participating in everyday life, what do you select as the important aspect of their life is also great disadvantage, which is called as problem of selectivity. And finally, using participant observation includes ethical questions. That is, do you have a right to see somebody else's life without his or her consent? That is one of the greatest question of ethics involved in participant observation. To conclude, let us summarize what we discussed here. In this, we discussed about research methods and types of research methods within the categories of primary quantitative, primary qualitative, secondary quantitative and secondary qualitative. We discussed advantages and disadvantages of official statistics questionnaire and structured interviews together, unstructured interviews and participant observation and types of participant observation both overt and covert. In the next part of this chapter, we will discuss about sampling, triangulation and the process of research. Till then, you can enjoy reading this part of the chapter. Thank you.